Hey everybody. Trinfinite X here, back with some more Metroid Prime. 100%. Okay. How's it going, everybody? So. I hope the volume's not too loud. It's pretty loud in my ears, but I hope it's okay for the recording. According to OBS, it's not that loud, so. Anyway. So I've been practicing diligently these past few days so that I can present a decent run of Metroid Prime to you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to be going through the game several times, uh, but we're going to start. We're going to start with the 100% run. These, these are uh, files that I created years ago. This, this is teenage me right here doing this. I'm pretty sure. 100% in five hours, ten minutes. Man. Huh, back when I had all that time to absolutely perfect everything. Anyway, we're gonna start with the 100% run. Just all the way through. And then we're gonna do two more runs after that to place uh, some save files directly before two particular bosses. And the sequence breaks that I'm going to be doing in those runs should be entertaining. Actually, I'm gonna be doing sequence breaks in all of these runs, but no out of bounds sequence breaks. Uh, normal mode will do just fine. Although, hmm. I might beat the game at har on hard mode at some point. Sounds like a good idea. Game starts out in deep space while I try to fix something for one of my viewers. This honestly feels like the perfect way to start the first 3D Metroid, just out in space like that. Just a second, I'm trying to figure something out. So I'm just gonna shoot these targets real quick, and I'm gonna pause to try and deal with something. I will definitely cut this out of the YouTube edit. All right, well, how's it going, Fifu? Have you played Metroid Prime before? Metroid Prime is a true classic of a game. When it first came out, people were not sure how 
Retro was going to translate the feel of 2D, 2D Super Metroid into 3D. Nobody was sure how that was going to go. But Retro did a surprisingly good job. Also, we can play Asteroids. Always thought that was a cute little feature. So, I think Prime 2 is a little better than Prime 1, but Prime 1 is still an excellent game, and also, most people still think Prime 1 is better. In any case, this is the first 3D Metroid, and it is beautifully crafted by Retro. I have already beaten this game long ago. Shadow27, thank you for the follow. Hey, how's it going? This is an excellent game you guys should definitely play. Uh, if you just want to play the game, you should consider getting the trilogy version for the Wii. But if you're a big fan of the series, of, of the Metroid series like I am, you should get the GameCube version so that you can do all the sequence breaks. Get, get an old original copy. You will have lots and lots of fun. We're gonna be getting 100%, so that includes all scans as well. So Shadow27, what kind of games do you play while well, I'm going through the, uh, the frigate here? This is the opening tutorial area of the game where they teach you about all the basic controls. So there's not too much to say here. charge up our shots, hold L to strafe or lock on, R will let us look around. I'm using a GameCube controller, of course. Got some wounded pirates here. Oh no, somehow my charge shot missed. What? Wow. That's weird. Charge shot doesn't normally miss. Pickups are for some reason scannable. Uh, you play Mario Kart 8, Splatoon, and a whole bunch of Mario games, eh? All right. Well, that's certainly a good list. We have missiles. Scan the missile pickups to get their data. There's lore in this game. This is a missable scan right here as once we pass the frigate, we will not be able to come back and get it. So you excited for Splatoon 3 coming out soon? Platoon's one of those series I never had a chance to really get into. But it certainly does look fun. Mario Kart is stuff is something that we do all the time. So perhaps even later to today, depending on how things go, we may do some Mario Kart. <laughs> Thrilled so much I fell out of your you fell out of your chair. Wow. 
So pretty ex so pretty excited then for uh, Splatoon 3. Wow. Well, if you've played a bunch of Mario games, then surely you've played Sunshine. In which case, you already know Splatoon was basically inspired by that one level in Sunshine. <laughs> and rather brilliantly so. But anyway, if you play Splatoon, then you're already familiar with, you know, at least some form of Nintendo first-person shooting. In which case, you should definitely consider the Metroid series, or at least the Prime series. Like I said, you can get the Wii version so you can point and shoot. Or if you want the old GameCube games, they're honestly better anyway because you can uh, sequence break a bunch more. Not that there aren't sequence breaks in uh, the Trilogy Collection. So Super Metroid had this thing where um, if you were exceptionally good at like wall jumping and bomb jumping, you could skip certain power-ups entirely or get them out of order. And it was designed that way on purpose. Uh, at least I believe so. This game was not designed that way on purpose, but if you're skilled enough, there are certain things that you can do. Out of order. Hey! Here's the Smash Brothers stage right here. We found the Parasite Queen. These space pirates have been messing around with things that they should not have. And we have the Parasite Queen. I'm going to use rapid fire missiles to kill the boss very fast. So, rapid fire missiles is an unintentional little uh, bug where by pressing the A button to fire the power beam, if you press the A button to fire the power beam um, immediately after firing a missile, you can actually fire another missile way sooner than intended. I affectionately call it the Missile Beam. Cause that's kind of what it feels like. You saw it right there. Pretty much deleted the Parasite Queen. Almost immediately. There's another Parasite, but things didn't go so well over here. We're gonna run past these pirates. We are not required to fight them. We're given seven minutes to escape the exploding frigate here. We don't need seven minutes. <laughs> Not even close to seven minutes. We need like half that amount of time. Just gotta keep rolling down these long tubes. There are definitely certain parts of this game that are less polished than others. Like you can tell, this is the first game in the series. This definitely has some first game syndrome here and there. Ah, little guy's chasing me around. But, all in all, it's still an excellent, excellent game. Tons of replay value. 
thanks to the sequence breaks. This is an excellent example of a Nintendo game where, or rather, an excellent uh, an excellent example of Nintendo's philosophy on games, where they don't like sequence breaks and glitches, but sequence breaks and glitches make the game better. So they keep trying to patch out glitches in later versions. Also, so in Other M, in Metroid Other M, when Samus encountered Ridley, she went crazy. But this is honestly a much, this is much more like what her reaction should have been. Ugh, the angry fist. Look at my angry eyebrows. It's just like, aw oh, man, Ridley again. That's what her reaction should have been like. Just an angry fist shake rather than PTSD trauma moment. Now there is one, definitely one weird thing about this game. compared to other M. So, yeah, and it's how she loses her power-ups. That's a pretty pitiful way to lose your power-ups. Apparently, just knocking Samus back into the wall hard enough is enough to get her to lose everything for some reason. I am navigating using the mini-map here a little bit. And, as I mentioned, game gives you seven minutes to escape. You really only need about half that time. Here we are at three minutes, a little less than three minutes, 30 seconds, and we're out. We've escaped the pirate frigate. But Ridley has escaped as well. We've got to track him down and find out what those crafty space pirates are up to. Can't let him get away. This game has a, a lot of remixed uh, remixed music from Super Metroid. Naturally. So here we are in our base armor suit. Little to no upgrades. We have arrived on Talon 4. And the very first thing we're going to do is move forward. Let's move forward to this door up here. We're going to do a little sequence break that's going to save us a ton of time. This sequence break's a little finicky. It may take a minute to get it, but basically, we're going to get Space Jump really, really early. Ah, if I can hold the lock. 
So, this game has a, a very strict intended sequence of items you're supposed to get. But as I stated earlier, if you're good enough at the game, you can get them out of order. Now, if you... I have the, uh, the Player's Choice Edition, so that's uh, the O2 version of the game. However, if you have the GameCube uh, 00 or 01 edition, you can do a technique called scan dashing to get this even easier. Right about there. There we go. But since I cannot do scan dashing because of the version I'm in, I have to lock on to enemies in order to dash. And it turns out that right behind our ship was Space Jump the whole time. So basically that trick literally boils down to exactly what you saw. Go through that door, lock on to that enemy, Go backwards to your ship, very carefully, following that exact diagonal path. Don't try to go straight back, or you'll lose the lock. Take a nice diagonal path back, go around to the back of your ship. Uh, you wanna line up. There's double jump, by the way. You wanna line it up so that if you look at the ship, Carefully, you'll see that little triangle right there. That's that, that uh, square and that triangle. Line it up so it's on the edge right there, and that's how you know you're ready to do the dash. So dashing is just uh, tapping s uh, sideways and B when you're locked onto something. I'm gonna scan this fellow right here. It's a beetle! But yeah, you just uh, tap B like that, and it will do a quick sideways dash. I have the hint system still turned on. I guess I could turn that off, possibly. I like to scan the mushrooms. I don't know why that's not a logbook entry. But anyway. Having double jump this early is a huge blessing. Like, it's actually really great. Ah, uh, we should probably get this scan now, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should. And you know what else? We'll even get that other enemy back here. Yeah, we'll get some of this other stuff right now so that it's out of our way for later. So what I'm doing right now is I'm scanning stuff for my uh, logbook. Counts towards hun uh, true 100% here. Scanning stuff is how uh, Samus interacts with, like, computers and the environment and how she gains data on bosses and enemies and such, as well as uh, all of the lore is locked behind scanning it, so it's totally optional, in other words. If you like the lore, uh, then you can read it, and if you don't, then it's totally optional but uh, right here for instance is some Chozo lore I'm not going to bother to read it unless you guys want me to and here we have made it to the first area of the game but with space jump in hand So, having space jump, 
this early on basically completely breaks this early part of the game. We're supposed to go way over here to get missiles and then go and then come all the way back here. to go through this uh, missile locked door here so that we can go and get uh, ah. Ah, I tried to tank him maybe I shouldn't have yeah I gotta clear him out now uh, so that we can come back here to get morph ball Basically, the beginning of this game amounts to them running you around a lot. This game likes to do that quite a bit. Loves to give people the run around. Apparently, I skipped the trigger right there for the fight to start. But there's supposed to be a fight before you get Morph Ball. I'm still gonna go ahead and trigger it anyway. But, uh. Yeah, here we go. I, apparently, I jumped over it without realizing. But basically, you can just jump over this with Space Jump and save yourself a ton of time. I am still going to do the fight. just because I want to get a particular scan. It's not really a difficult battle anyway. You just gotta keep mashing the A button as you lock on to things. We can double check that we've scanned these. And then a big one comes out and they have to show it off to us great detail. This is not a missable scan. There are some scans that are permanently missable if you don't get them. This is not one of them because this enemy becomes a regular enemy. Ah, becomes a regular enemy after a certain part of the game. Two missiles is enough to bring it down. And now we're allowed to get morph ball. Or, or we already have it. Okay. Oh. Hold on. We're also allowed to stand on this tiny, tiny little twig there. Yeah, see that tiny twig? We are going to stand on that. I can line it up right and there's a free missile power up at the top of this that we're supposed to have boost ball for but we don't need boost ball we can just grab it so what do you all think so far interesting It's definitely a game you should consider. Anyway, now that we have we have missiles by basically like that missile power up I picked up, we're supposed to have boost ball for that one too. But uh turns out you can just grab it. And also we seem to have lost the music. The music seems to have disappeared. Huh. Well, I'm sure we'll find it again shortly. But actually, that is not something I encountered in practice. How odd. 
It's fine. Trust me. It'll be back very soon. Just gonna grab that scan right there. Basically, scan every creature, scan every lore, scan everything that's red or a creature. I'll put more detail into that in a minute. So this is a creature, it has an orange box. We wanna go ahead and scan that, of course. But there are also things that have a red box and if we ever see that, that means it's important and we should scan it. Here's save station, we'll go ahead and grab that. Okay, and then let's see if the music's back. Oh, there it is. Just needed a good old save. Again, just double checking that I already have certain scans. Uh, if you already have something, you'll see it's kind of uh, dulled. It's kind of dulled out there. That's how you know if you have something already. We're supposed to climb this long sequence of uh, stairs and go around through a morph ball tunnel. That sounds like a little too much work. Basically, we can stand on like even the tiniest little platforms in this game. So we can kind of just go around anywhere, almost anywhere we want. Ooh, there's uh, some large health. Go ahead and grab the scan for that, as well as the scan for the locked door. There are definitely some weird scans in this game. And uh, in Metroid Prime 2, that uh, not all of these things are scannable. Like, uh, the, the pickups that you collect being research items is like, Definitely a first game kind of thing. It's like, wow, even the pickups? Why did that need to be? Anyway, so we're doing these bosses a little out of order. In case you're familiar with this game, you should already know this is not the path that we are intended to go down. We're going to fight Incinerator Drone a bit early to get Morph Ball Bombs because it will save us an enormous amount of time to get this now and not later. And Incinerator Drone. Incinerator Drone is not really hard by any means. Uh, it might get you on your first playthrough, but once you once you understand what's going on, you will quickly realize. Ah, ah, come here, come here. There we go. Barbed War Wasp. You will quickly realize how to beat this boss. Hey, Aurora, how's it going? So there's the Barbed War Wasp that is unique to this fight. This is totally a missable scan. Once you beat Incinerator Drone, you can never scan this again. Anyway, how's it going, Aurora? You, uh, you feeling okay today? After all the stuff you've been through? this week 
Because uh, I know you've had a lot going on. So I hope you're doing well. Ah. Broke my lock. There we go. We need to get rid of this guy. Incinerator drone doesn't deal that much damage, really. So as long as you play relatively carefully, you can just jump up and get this health, no problem. Make sure to focus incinerator drone whenever you have the opportunity. Don't ignore the war wasps, though. They will, uh, they'll deal more damage than Incinerator does. Come on. Open up. Once you do that four times, Incinerator's done. You went to work today. Trying to get that health up there. And I'd imagine it was far better than jury duty. But uh, did like jury duty end early or something? Is that what allowed you to go to work as well? Don't forget to collect this missile expansion. There's basically no reason to ever come back to this room. So you will end up having to do a good bit of backtracking if you forget it. It ended yesterday, huh? Well, that's good. That's good to hear. I hope it all went well, more or less. I hope justice was done. And all that. It's good to hear that it's over. Gotta scan the morph ball slot. Now we're going to go ahead and do a, uh, do this puzzle again a little bit in advance of when we're supposed to do it. game really wants to tell me about an energy spike that it's detected, but it's actually located right next to where we're going. So Aurora, what version of Metroid Prime do you have? Double jump saving us some time. Trilogy. Ah, okay. Well, if in that case, uh, you won't be able to do everything that I'm doing in this run, but... You'll still be able to do some things if you're interested in it. But basically, I um, I beat the I beat the frigate, obviously, and I'm here in Choso Ruins, the beginning part of the game. But before coming here, I did the ridiculously easy trick to get uh, space jump early, so that I can double jump. It saves a huge amount of time in the beginning. Trilogy has that removed completely. Like, there's no way to get space jump early. But there are sequence breaks in Trilogy. There are sequence breaks in Trilogy still. 
Especially with the spring ball that they give you. It's extremely convenient. But anyway, having space jump is really just a time-saving measure. That's all it really amounts to. For example, this power-up up here, you kind of have to have double jump to reach it. And of course, Morph Ball Bomb. But because we have double jump already, we can just get up here and collect it. And that saves us from having to come back here to get it. In fact, yeah, what's our next upgrade? Yeah, our next upgrade is in here. Also, by beating Incinerator Drone before getting Charge Beam, we'll be saving a lot of time as there's an easy missile power-up to be had. And that beating, uh, beating Incinerator Drone without Charge Beam isn't really a sequence break. That's just a choice that you have. Uh, I forgot to scan it, though. Uh-oh. May have to go back a step or two here. Yep, yeah, hold on. Just grab that. Ugly-looking vines. And I missed another one. Hold on. I forgot one back here. Go. Like so. But anyway, by beating Incinerator Drone, when we did, we have Morph Ball Bombs, which lets us get this missile power up that's literally just off to the left here. So we don't have to come back here as often for backtracking. Charge Beam lets us destroy these finally. Only Charge Beam will actually destroy these guys. Aurora, is the is the volume balanced okay? Like you can hear the game and you can hear me just fine. I hope everything's balanced okay. It's not like too loud or anything. Okay. So among the things that you can do in Trilogy version, you can still do the uh, the rapid fire missiles that I used to take out Parasite Queen. You can still do rapid fire missiles. So at least there's that. It actually looks, the cutscene actually looks a lot funnier in Trilogy because you get to see the rings uh, get thrown to the side. The giant force field rings get kind of thrown to the side. It's kind of a weird animation. It's in this game too, but the cutscene, the camera angle's different, so you don't see it very much. But in the trilogy version, it looks really weird when the force field rings just kind of, like, randomly reposition and get thrown off.
So, I'll go ahead and point it out now. Basically, what the game wants you to do, when you first get to Chozo Ruins, you're supposed to go get missiles by going around a long path to Hive Mecha over here. Then you're supposed to go all the way back through that course to go over here and get Morph Ball. Then, you get to go all the way around... And, let's see. Is it... Yeah, I think it's bombs next. Yeah, you get to go all the way through here to get uh, incinerator drone, and then you can get charge beam. And then, if you want a ton of the power-ups that they hidden, that they hid in the uh, the route to Hive Mecha, uh, you can then go back along the route a third time to pick up all the power-ups. But, by having double jump Early, we are saving a ton of backtracking. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute here. There's a lot of backtracking that this game wants you to do that we are avoiding by taking the path that we have taken. Not to mention, having Space Jump just makes everything feel nicer. Like, just in general, everything feels better. I'm just gonna run past those guys. Grab that lore. The game's trying to tell us there's a save station nearby. To which I answer, see that missile power up that's locked behind bombs? We would have to go back through this area several times in order to get that. Ah, oops, hold on. There's a way to get up there, and I want it. There we go. We just kind of skipped the puzzle entirely. By standing on that tiny little tree branch above the door. Now we'll go to the save station they are trying to tell us about. There we go. Oh yeah, very resourceful. How's it going, Avalon? I know you've played this game at least, right? Hi, War Wasp. So, war wasps will keep spawning out of their hive until you destroy the hive with a missile. They will spawn infinitely. I guess we don't technically have to do that. But I want to. So, how are you today, Avalon? How are things going? As you can see, um, even though I have the uh, Player's Choice Edition, the one that won't let you do scan dashing, I did a little trick to get Space Jump early before coming to Chozo Ruins. So we are saving a bunch of time by having that upgrade early. destroy that before entering the room so that we don't have to fight any war wasps yeah I am very thankful to have more people in my audience nowadays a 
missile power up locked behind missiles on the way to missiles. That's just how this game rolls. So by having missiles early, we're saving a ton of time not having to come through here. Also, we needed bombs to get through that tunnel. So again, saving lots of time. Yeah, Aurora and Avalon, both of you are... Both of you are my, uh... My original founding members, as it were. I appreciate you both. Thank you so much for coming. And sticking around. So, here we have Hive Mecha. What was supposed to be the first boss of the game. We will now humiliate it. There are two scans in this fight that never appear again. The hive mecha itself, this one is easy to miss because it's down in the water. And then there's these guys. The Ram War Wasps. So if you miss either of these scans, you gotta restart. You can never get them again. I think Trilogy actually made it so that that doesn't happen. I think I don't think Trilogy actually has any missable scans. At least I'm pretty sure. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. I thought I read somewhere that they fixed that. Like, I mean, besides bosses. Like, obviously, if you miss a boss. But I meant, like missable uh, lore, like the one missable lore scan. I think they fixed that and like some of the enemies too, I thought. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just crazy. Still, if you're following along, you won't miss anything anyway. <laughs> She'll never see me right in front of her. Really? I'm pretty sure, like, I could have swore I read somewhere that they fixed some of the, uh, the missable enemies that are, like, like, there's some, uh, there's certain ice enemies that just, like, disappear forever after you get Thermal Visor. Like, I thought they... I thought they fixed that. Anyway. So, if you're playing Trilogy version, you won't be able to get early space jump. But here's basically what the game wants you to do. They want you to come all the way here. Like, you, you get to Chozo Ruins. They want you to go all the way through this only to get here and discover you need Morph Ball, so you have to go all the way back, go over here to get Morph Ball, then, yeah, you have to go all the way through here to get Incinerator Drone and Charge Beam. And if you want the power-ups that, that were locked behind, like, Bomb and everything, you gotta go through all this again. Speaking of which, I actually missed a door back there. I think that's the map room. I'll go get it. But um, you have to go through all this whole thing again, and then go through here. Finally, once you have, once you have Morph Ball, I'm gonna go quickly get that room I missed. But 
But yeah, there's a ton of backtracking in this game. Like, a lot of it. And we are skipping a healthy chunk of it. By having all of these power-ups out of order. You won't be able to do that much in Trilogy, but there are still some sequence breaks that will save you a lot of time later, especially. Yeah, it's just a map station. That's fine. I'll take it anyway. Because it doesn't feel complete if I don't get everything. Open up. There we go. Alright, so we already have Morph Ball, so we can just go right through this tunnel. Avalon, since you have this game, I s presume you have the GameCube version, uh, have you done any sequence breaking? You haven't? Oh my goodness, Avalon. It's just like Super Metroid, only unintentionally. Like, if you're really good at the game... There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. You should definitely try it. Like, what version do you have? Like, if you look on your disc, you'll see uh, you'll see what version you you have. You either have uh, 00, 01, or... Yeah, I mean, GameCube. But, like, there's six different versions of the GameCube, of the GameCube game. Grab this lore real quick. Then run back over here. Now they want us to go fight uh, Flagra. We'll get to that shortly. If you look on your disc... Uh, okay, you can't look at it. Alright, fair enough. But if you look on your disc... Um, you'll see that there's... Probably either zero 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 one or zero two. If you have the zero zero or zero one version, you have the speed running version of the game that has scan dashing that will let you do a lot more tricks than even I'm doing. A lot easier than I'm doing things. Um, I have the zero two version. So I have the, the PAL version, or the North American uh, Player's Choice Edition, which has a bunch of fixes to certain sequence breaks. However, it doesn't have fixes for all the sequence breaks. Just some of them. Little double bomb jump there. Go ahead and get this now. Make sure to turn back around. Because we are facing the other way. But anyway, yeah, Avalon, you should go back and play this game again. Do some sequence breaking. Like, pretty much no matter what version of the GameCube uh, version you have, you can do all of the tricks that I'm doing because I'm using the, uh... Because I'm using the Player's Choice Edition to do these tricks. Whatever I'm doing, you can do. Alright, so next up is Flagra. Yep, it's time for Flagra already. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Whoops. Went a little too far. It's extra content, and it's not difficult. Like, some of these, some of these tricks are really, really easy. Really, Flagra? Did you struggle with uh, Flagra a lot, Aurora? A 
ancient Mayan space alien bird skating ramps. <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Anyway. Just gotta climb this room. Again, space jump makes this really, really fast and easy. Uh... Again, it's really just about saving time. So if you don't, if you're playing Trilogy and you don't have early space jump, don't worry about it. You'll just have to take a slightly uh, longer route around. That's really all that means. I'm gonna kill those hives in advance so that I don't have to deal with them. Did scan the one back there, right? I did scan that, right? Ah, uh, now I have to go check. Yes, I did. Okay, I got that one. Yeah. Thankfully, it's not too difficult to check. Things you turn into a ball and propel yourself using that one upgrade in. <laughs> I could double jump across or I can roll through like I'm supposed to. So I'm not reading most of the lore in this game, but... If you're here for it, Avalon, I will absolutely read everyone's favorite lore. Everyone's favorite pirate lore. When we get to it. You should know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Where the pirates try to duplicate Samus's tech. The results are pretty hilarious. Uh, I never, uh, I didn't go back to save, did I? Eh, oh well. I don't need to save before Flagra. Flagra will not cause me that much problems. Yeah, pretty much. Just, we found some alien goo, injected into a bunch of stuff. Of, uh, I'm a genius. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you're, you're pretty, you're pretty much right on the money with that, Avalon. That is basically space pirate science in a nutshell. All right, so, Flagra. This guy, uh, I, I just, I feel like Metroid just doesn't do plant bosses very well. Spore spawn was long and needlessly tedious and boring. Just like Flagra. So, here's how Flagra works. First of all, we scan him. Gotta get the scan. Come here. Which is a little awkward because of how far away he is. And then we gotta scan Flagra's tentacle. For some reason, this is a separate creature scan and easily missable. So then I like to stun Flagra. A pair of missiles will accomplish this task and one to knock this over. And then we go in here like this. And that's phase one.
And basically, that's how I would keep doing this fight. Now there's two. I'll, I'll do another phase proper here. Fire two missiles at him. Oh, he puts plants in your way. Just do this. Use dash to get around him. Fire a pair of missiles. Three in that case, because he was still invincible. And then stun him like that. Look, no problem. And this goes on and on for a bit. Next up is three sun lamps. But there's a faster way to do this if you're playing the GameCube version. So it turns out that once you do the first one, all of the, um, all of the morph ball bomb slots become active. And if you have space jump early, you can hit them from, you can hit the, uh, the box from outside the slot like that. We don't have to knock the, the sun lamps down. Not that that's hard. <laughs> Do you know how long it took me to figure this fight out? Two missiles. Stun Flagra. And then we'll dash around to the last one. We definitely want him to be stunned. While we do this. There we go. We can skip knocking the mirrors down. We don't need to do that. Again, if you're playing the trilogy version, all you have to do is just keep stunning him with your missiles. Keep using your missiles to stun him. Knock the mirrors down and do it the slow way. <laughs> it's honestly not that bad. It's just really lengthy. It's just tedious. <laughs> well, okay, but don't don't go comparing, you know, your blind run to my run. I've played this game dozens of times. So of course I made it look easy cuz I've I've, I have all this past experience. Don't beat yourself up if your blind run wasn't as smooth as my polished run that I've practiced all week. And Variasuit. Or Variasuit, however you want to pronounce it. Samus had her calm eyebrows on there. Anyway. Also, you see the, uh, if you beat Flagra this way, you'll see the sun lamps are kind of left on there. So, there is a trick. Avalon, have you, spe have you seen the speed run for this game? Like, have you seen the, uh, the AGDQ people run, run this game before? I mean, I would imagine so. If you like this game, you should watch their speedruns. Oh my goodness, you haven't? Okay, so, there's a crazy trick you can do coming up next, where you can get the artifact of Wild early. I'm gonna show you what it involves, but I'm not going to actually do the trick because it's really hard. But basically, you jump into this corner and roll into a ball. And you see how I'm not falling very fast? You can actually infinite bomb jump all the way up this. Ah, uh, yeah. 
It's uh, kind of challenging, though. Like that. Okay, I'm not going to bother with this. I'm actually going to try and get out of this, if I can. If I can. Uh-oh. Am I stuck? Oh, no, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to get out of there. But you can basically infinite bomb jump all the way up there after hitting the trigger to swap the room's layer and get the artifact of wild early without spider ball. It's a cool trick. But it's a little difficult. The timing for the bomb jumps is uh, really precise. So I'm not going to be doing that. That trick was too much for this run. We have no reason to be patient here. We can just dive down to the bottom. And we've just about found the good music. Let's go ahead and save here. So many Shriek Bats. Scan our new enemy here. Our new little creature. And then kill him for his missile drop and move on. Mahmood Caves? Oh, Magmore. Yeah, I was about to say. Magmore Caverns. Here we are. We found the good music. As I said earlier, a large amount of this music is all... It's all remixed from Super Metroid. And that's honestly kind of a good thing. It fits the game extremely well. So th again, that rapid fire missile technique I just did on that Magmore, you can do that in Trilogy Aurora. Also, here's another thing I bet you didn't know. Two missiles. You don't even need supers to reveal that. You can save a little bit of time backtracking by getting this artifact super early. And I'm pretty sure that still works in Trilogy. Or maybe you'll have to come back with supers. Either, either way, it's ridiculously easy. So, one of the major criticisms of this game is that at the end of the game, you have to do a ridiculously long um, amount of backtracking. There's a huge uh, collect 12 artifacts backtracking loop you have to go through where basically you have to do a lap and I'm not joking, a lap through every area in the game to collect all these uh, artifacts that are carefully hidden about and they don't tell you they don't give you hints for them all like they don't give you hints for them all um, right away, like you have to collect some and then it'll you'll have to go all the way back to Talon overworld to get the hint for the next one and so you have to do multiple laps through every area it's really obnoxious but if you know where the artifacts are in advance you can just collect some of them and save yourself a huge amount of backtracking like a huge amount of backtracking this game has got almost way too much of it in certain places also here's another one You're not, so you're supposed to have x-ray to find that, but it, again, if you know where it is, you can just go get it. There's no reason to wait. There we 
go. Alright, now we're gonna go get another missile power up since we're right here. Hey, Bradenator, how's it going? I was wondering where you were. Since you said you were going to be here. How's it going? Sell you subscribed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey. Thank you for the sub, Bradenator. You've subscribed for two months. I am actually working on a subscriber uh, sub badge that I hope to have out soon. That was unproductive due to those little guys. I went the wrong way. There we go. Raidenator, have you ever played Metroid Prime? Or any of the 3D Metroids? If you have not... Yeah, you haven't? Okay. I highly recommend them. You really should get into Metroid. Not even 2D? Oh my gosh. Dude, you're missing out. You really should play the Metroid games. They're awesome. Specifically, Super Metroid... And the, uh, all the 3D Metroids, Prime 1, 2, and 3, you can skip over Other M, though, I guess. Ah, these guys. Let me go. Ah. I mean, I guess he took me where I wanted to go anyway, but still. Yeah, everybody's hoping that we get a uh, trilogy for the Switch. Twilogy. Trilogy. Um. This, however, is the GameCube version that I'm playing on right now, specifically the, uh, the North American Player's Choice version. I hope you enjoy your lightning spray, Nader. By all means, go drop some lightnings in other people's chat after the stream. Enjoy your newfound power. But anyway, yeah, the Prime series is classic. Like, absolutely classic. You really should play it. Like, I mean, how does the game look to you so far right now? In just the few minutes you've seen. Unlimited power! Yes, exactly. Now you've got the right idea. It's a very versatile emote. That's true, it also works for Urbosa. Or Thor. You could use it for Thor. Like, see, lightning is just such a it's such a easily spammable emote. Okay. So here we have to do some double bomb jumping. Aurora, how good are you at double bomb jumping? I don't know if you remember this E-Tank up here. Oh yeah, no, when I eventually go back to uh, Pokemon, my emote's going to work out really well.
You definitely should get good at uh, bomb jumping. Double bomb jumping, Aurora. It's uh, it's kind of worth it, as you can see right there. No shortcuts, no tricks. That's how they expect you to do it in Trilogy 2. That's just how it is. It's not too hard. It's not too hard to learn. You just gotta drop a bomb as the first one is exploding. The timing is rhythmic. You, you can get it. Uh, slightly, but it's not, like I said, it's not that hard. It's honestly, it's easier than Super Metroid doing the, uh, the infinite bomb jumping in Super Metroid is way harder. Like, significantly so. We have some new things to scan, because we're in a new area. We'll go ahead and unlock the door above us. Save station detected. Yes, game. I'm aware. First, we're going to scan the flicker bats, though. Because, as it turns out, Samus is a xenobiologist. And has to record everything in her logbook. So, we're almost to the point of the game where having space jump early isn't really a huge advantage anymore. Because we're almost, uh... Actually, Xenobiologist is spelled with an X, unless that's a pun on something that I'm unaware of. But anyway, so real quick, there's a detour. There's a very important detour you need to take right here. Go through here. And scan the Ice Burrower. This creature, in the GameCube version at least, disappears forever after you get thermal. I don't know how it is in Trilogy. But... Oh, you didn't know how to spell it? Oh, okay. Well, that's that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. After you get Thermal Visor, those bugs disappear, and that's a permanently missable logbook scan. So normally, you're supposed to go through there and go through a huge loop that leads you around here and then go through this door. But because we have double jump, we can just jump on this platform and uh, just kind of make it up here. And that's honestly probably the last little sequence break that we can do with double jump early. Get some more Chozo lore up here. Again, if you guys want me to start reading the lore, I can do that. But I figure it's probably better to not spoil the game too much for you guys. Uh, the, st the story in this game is done pretty much perfectly in that it's entirely optional. It's done through logbook scans. But it's also extremely easy to, to access. It's almost like, imagine if the entire story of, like, say, Breath of the Wild, like, you know how there's, like, diaries and stuff in Breath of the Wild? So imagine that. So, like, you just, you find these diaries and you can read them or you can not read them. But imagine the diaries being kept in your, in your, in your menu. So, like... Once you find someone's diary, you can have instant access to it at any time. Logbook. Pirate data. Chozo lore. Creatures. You can do you can literally go through all your scans. They're permanently recorded for you. So it's much more handy than uh, Breath of the Wild's version. Now, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and scan these guys. Do I have to? I guess I don't have to. Yeah, I'll scan them later. There's another scan in this room that's very, very important. A 
just uh, zip past these guys. Since we can't destroy them yet. Grab this. Using double jump, we can kind of make our way up here. Again, a little sooner than in intended. Walk past this. There is a monster back there. I could fight it, but there's really no need. as we will be fighting a bunch of those monsters very soon. So here's Boost Ball. This is the item we're supposed to get right before Double Jump, right before Space Jump. So we are now effectively at the point in the game where having Space Jump early doesn't matter anymore. Because now the game expects us to have it. Well, after we get out of here. All right, some more scans for us to collect here on our way out. I love how the game is searching for more half-pipe configurations. I love how half-pipe is the official name of that. Now we have some more scans. We have a baby Shegath, or Shegoth. That's the baby. These, this is a missable scan. These ice shriek bats right here, these will disappear after you collect thermal. Make sure you get them now. Yeah, that is the baby. That's the baby. We're gonna walk right past him. Because we don't have to fight them. So why would we? Hey, what's this? A quick reminder of why we're down here. Now, just in case you were itching to see me fight the Shegath rather than run from it, don't worry. That fight's coming. In fact, it's coming very soon. Ow. Forgot not to do that. Don't charge up or these guys will go crazy and jump on you. We are going straight. And that's all it takes. Just jump behind them and they die. But, uh... We're going straight to Wave Beam, which means that fight is coming soon. Scan the Ice Parasite. This is another limited scan. Once you get uh, Thermal, I think they're gone forever. Again, all the Ice enemies just kind of disappear after you get Thermal and are replaced by Pirate enemies. Whoa. Oh, that guy knocked me off. Forgot there was a second one right there. So after platforming through this area right here. Ah, not again. Man, so many little guys on like every single platform.
Now. I think I can make that jump, actually. There we go. Oh, wait. Missile. Excuse me. Okay. Trust me. The big fight's coming up, Braidenator. You're about two minutes removed from a really, really awesome fight. A really scary fight, actually. So, I remember this fight blind. It was terrifying. And I definitely died here. The first time you do the adult Shigath, or she, I keep calling him Shigath, but it's Shigath. The first time you fight the adult Shigoth, it's uh, it's a pretty scary experience. So there's Wave Beam right in front of us. Invisible wall stops us from getting it. And suddenly, hey look, we gotta fight these guys. Ow. A bunch of them. And as soon as you kill one, another one comes in. Up to four. You have to fight four babies in a row. Ow. And then the big one comes in. And of course they show it off and it's giant teeth in great detail. So as you can see our power beam is not doing anything to this creature. In fact, getting behind it and shooting it in its back won't work either. We have to wait for it to use its ice, ice breath, ow. Yeah, this fight is uh, terrifying your first time through. But basically, you have to wait for it to use its ice breath and then hit it with missiles in the face. Again, I'm using Missile Beam to make this a lot easier. Something else you can do is you can lay bombs and bombs. If you lay bombs underneath it, it will take damage that way as well. Those are the two ways that you can kill the she the Shigoth. Personally, I prefer rapid fire missiles. They work exceedingly well. And again, I, I'm pretty sure you can do rapid fire missiles in uh, Trilogy as well. Like this is the speed you're supposed to be able to fire missiles at like that but you can fire them much faster if you tap a in between your shots I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm not sure if it works exactly the same in trilogy but I know it's doable so that will save you a ton of trouble Aurora just missile beam on, just missile beam on people. So now we have wave beam. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like uh, like Super Metroid. So what'd you think of that fight, Braidenator? Uh, it doesn't work quite like like uh, Super Metroid, where um, it passes through walls, but. It's still pretty cool. It's got an electric element to it. It's quite fun to use. Cool and creepy. Well, I hope you enjoyed it.
Like I said, that fight is terrifying the first time you do it, but... Oh yeah, now that we've killed that, regular Shigoths are now in the opening area here. <laughs> you know, just for fun. Anyway, so now that we have Wave Beam, now we're going to finally go back to uh, Talon. Now wait, you might say. We're not supposed to go back to Talon after getting Wave Beam. After getting Wave Beam, we're supposed to move on to the Pirate Labs, right? Eh, not quite. Not quite. You'll understand why in a moment, but there's actually a, a sequence break that I'm going to do that is going to make our lives significantly easier. And it's not even that hard to do. And this is also the part in Trilogy where you would be doing a sequence break as well. Even in the Trilogy version, ah. There is a sequence break coming up that is immensely beneficial to do. It. Um, it's not gonna look the same. I'll quickly explain what Trilogy does but I'm not going to do it because there's a better way in the GameCube version. Just get rid of that guy. And, eh, lava's just lava. We're taking a dip in the hot tub. Not a problem. Samus loves hot tubs. Lava hot tubs. We're gonna quickly grab a missile power up up here. There is no railing here, so moving carefully is a good thing. Here we go. Double-checking I have that. Another quick little dip to warm us up after that cold sh uh, Shigath fight. Shigath. I'll correct myself someday. You know what? Uh, do I care? Well, with this much health, actually I do. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that guy and take the proper route through here. We could just take another dip in the lava. And it would be faster than going around that way, but... Okay, so basically this room coming up right here. So trilogy version, there's a ledge over there that you're not supposed to be able to get over to get to the door on the other side of this room. See that ledge there? It's too high for us to reach normally, but there's a trick you can do to get back there. Like a double bomb jump into a jump out of a morph ball. If you do that, it will take you to an elevator where you can fight Thardis early and get Spider Ball sooner than intended. From there, you can get Ice Beam and then go into Pirate Labs and save a huge amount of time backtracking. Like, an enormous amount of time. You will save, like, around a half an hour almost. Well, assuming you're new to the game, you will save, like, a half an hour by fighting Thardis early and getting the Spider Ball and getting Ice Beam sooner. And then when you do Pirate Labs with Ice Beam, it's much faster. Because you can go through Pirate Labs instead of having to turn around at the Ice Beam door at the end and go all the way back through it again. So, that's what the Trilogy version does. 
And it doesn't even look that hard. It actually looks pretty easy to do. But, um... Just that alone would save you a huge amount of time. What I'm going to do is actually even better. We're just going to go get Ice Beam right now. Taking this rather conveniently, this rather convenient path here. Jumping through the fog to get this hidden missile expansion. Oh, so cleverly hidden. Gonna walk up this area right here, and we'll be back in the Talon overworld in no time. Let's get these guys off so they don't knock me off the platform. Collect this scan over here. Hey, look, it's Flagra again. Only it's a mini Flagra. All right. Just because I like filling out the map. We're gonna get rid of these guys, hold on. Pro skating her rolling, yep. We're gonna actually take the route the game intends for us to go back through to get um, space jump. We're gonna go through that route just so I can show it off. This is the method by which you're intended to get to the back of your ship. By having boost ball, you can get up there. And hey, look, we're back behind here where we got space jump. Just jump back here. And there it is in there. But we already got it. We don't need it. We're here to save. And we're going to quickly grab a power-up that's literally right behind our ship. Literally. Tiny little tunnel back there. And now we carry on to Chozo Ruins. This game is fun, Bradenator. You should get it. It's totally worth it. Especially if you get the trilogy uh, edition, you can just play the game and just enjoy it. The way it was meant to be played. And there's still some sequence breaks if you want to do them. Or, if you really want to have fun, get the GameCube version if you're willing to dedicate some time to this game. Then you can learn the really cool tricks. So... I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here. No, actually, hold on. I'll pause at the save station coming up. There's a save station coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and pause at that save station. And we're going to go to break. I feel like we've been streaming long enough. It's time for one. And then we'll go ahead and grab Ice Beam early.
right up here. It's an old save station we've used a couple of times. There we go. Was that Donald Duck you heard? What? <laughs> uh, I didn't hear anything Donald Duck. <laughs> what? That's not something I would expect from a Metroid game. Anyway, I'm gonna go to break real quick. See you guys in just a minute. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is where most people tell you to like, comment, and subscribe. And while I would appreciate you doing all that, if you enjoyed my content, come check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash trinfinitex so you can watch and chat with me while I make these. I'm a family-friendly streamer, so everybody's welcome. Throw me a follow on Twitch and Twitter so you can get notifications when I go live. Links will be down in the description. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to meeting you.